Today on Locked on Phoenix Suns, Charles Barkley back in the news criticizing who else but Kevin Durant and posing the question that I think all Suns fans have been thinking about for a while. Is Devin Booker the leader of this team already? Does he need to be? We'll give our takes next. You are Locked on Suns. Your daily Phoenix Suns podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And we're back. This is Locked On Phoenix Suns, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I'm Brendan Clean, a staff writer at Awful Announcing and a credential media member covering the Suns for the past seven seasons. That is Ben Garcia, the executive producer of The Drive on 910 AM here in Phoenix. We are back with you. Hit follow or subscribe if you have not already. Become an everydayer. Get locked onto the Phoenix Suns right here with thousands of other Suns fans to kick off your morning. Every morning. Charles Barkley is the topic of conversation today around Suns land. And why don't we let Charles Barkley do the talking for us, Ben, here to get us started. Went on Bill Simmons' podcast. Basically... Called out the leadership structure of this team as he has multiple times. Said it's not going to be Kevin Durant. It has to be Devin Booker. And until that happens, he's not taking this team seriously. I'll play the clip in a moment. First, want to let everybody know today's show is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use the code Locked On NBA for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Here's Chuck. But the whole dynamic of the team changed when KD and Bill came there. Yeah. You know, so so now they got to have leadership. He's got to take the leadership role because I think he's reluctant because people assume that KD's the best player. I said, but your best player don't have to. Kevin, Kevin has said he doesn't want to be a leader. He just want right. to play basketball. And I challenged Booker last year, and they got mad. I said, Suns don't have any leadership. They don't have a style of play. And they got mad, which I don't care. Uh, but I said it's got to be Booker. He's going to take a serious leadership role because people are going to well, follow him. People are going to people are going to listen to him because he's a great player. But he's got to become more of a leader. Got to be more of a vocal leader. All right, Ben. Do you agree with Charles Barkley there? Man, I love Charles Barkley. Just immediately, they got mad at me, but I don't care. And it, it's it's funny because sometimes Charles Barkley can be a little outlandish. And I remember this quote last year. And I went on Fox Sports 910. I filled in the very next day on the drive. And my point was everyone was getting so frustrated with Charles Barkley for, you know, basically saying Kevin Durant's not a leader. He doesn't want to be a leader. And he's absolutely right. Now, there's it's a double-edged sword here. You don't need to be a leader. And being a good or bad leader doesn't have anything to do with you as a basketball player. Barkley is absolutely right. Devin Booker needs to be the leader of this team. Doesn't He doesn't need to be the best player. That I disagree with. But he absolutely needs to be the leader of this team. He's the heartbeat. He's the soul. He's the only guy left from the 2021 finals team. He's the only guy that feels like ours. And regardless of how great Kevin Durant is, and I've already said he's a top 10 player of all time, Devin Booker is the heartbeat of this team. He needs to be the leader. And one thing that I've kind of gotten frustrated with Devin Booker Last year, is it, it kind of felt like he knew he was little bro to Kevin Durant, and it felt like it was too tough for him to kind of get in the shoes of trying to lead Kevin Durant because it's hard to lead a guy who's got multiple Olympic gold medals, who's got multiple, I guess I should say, two NBA championships, two finals MVPs, an MVP. It's like, what do you have to say to me? You know, I, I've made this comp before. It's like me stepping into Fox Sports Studios, and I think I'm good at what I do, but I'm trying to tell Colin Coward and Skip Bayless and Shannon Sharp and whoever it is how to do their job correctly. It's easy, kid. I've done this before. So, yeah, Barkley's a 1,000% right. Don't you agree? Barkley's not saying anything we don't already know. That's what I thought was so funny about not only him going out of his way to say it, but Suns fans getting bent out of shape about it. But bigger than that, I feel like leadership in the NBA in sports is the most 
blown out of proportion, misunderstood thing that fans and media possibly talk about. One, because we know the best players, no matter what sport you look at outside of maybe the quarterback position, don't have to be the best leaders on a team in order to be successful. That can be proven time and again across all sorts of things. Even in life, I think we all know that that's not always the case, that the highest ranking person is not always the place where the motivation comes from. These things are obvious to us. And I also just feel like we have no idea what we're talking about when we look at who this even is, right? In terms of, especially now before a single tip off has been had, no, no balls been bounced in this NBA season to say what each team's makeup is going to be underneath the surface at the, the leadership level is just silly. But even once all that happens and the games are being played and we're seeing performance after performance during the NBA season, I still don't think we know more than five, 10% of, of what this really is. So if we're just looking at the star players on the Suns and the head coach, clearly there was a disconnect last year. Frank Vogel could not motivate this group. There were multiple episodes that got reported about where he lost the trust and the attention and was being maybe laughed at, if you believe that. It didn't work out. Kevin Durant has told us he doesn't want to be a rah-rah, barking at everybody, smacking everybody on the butt every second of every day type of person. He never has been, doesn't want to be, doesn't have to be. And Booker himself has said over the years, especially since Chris Paul has been gone, that he knows that that's on him. The Suns fired a coach to fix the Vogel part of this. All of these things, I think, are just well understood, obvious parts of what has to happen here. And yeah, the buck is going to stop with Booker and Mike Budenholzer and hopefully some other vets who can step up. But I don't think Barkley's wrong. I just think this is something the team's been having to address for over a year now, and we got to see if they can get it together. Yeah, let me let me disagree with you here on one thing you said. Uh, leadership, I believe, matters a ton to a team that is trying to win a championship. Now, it doesn't need to be one guy. The Boston Celtics this year, as much of a gripe I have with Jason Tatum and, and others on that team, it was full of a bunch of guys who are real dudes who absolutely don't struggle with leading one another. The issue with that is that was already a foundation that's kind of been built there. With the Suns, it's kind of a lot of nothing in terms of players who hadn't played together. So the leadership did kind of matter because it was just this hodgepodge of guys who had no foundation and, and nothing else. So like it matters more to us because Devin Booker has to be that foundation. And last year, call it injuries, whatever it was, not being on the court is an issue. Devin Booker did a poor job of leading this team. Now, is that stepping up and talking to KD more? Is that not laughing at your coach, even though he was a buffoon of a head coach? Like, that's what leaders do. And I think this team, if they're going to succeed, have to be so much better in the leadership department. And I think a lot of that not only falls on Devin Booker this year, but especially, you had mentioned this, especially falls on the shoulders of Coach Budenholzer. Budenholzer brings a real championship pedigree, not the bubble thing where LeBron James kind of carried Frank Vogel. Mike Budenholzer, especially now after he got fired by the Milwaukee Bucks and everyone's like, oh, he, he wasn't the problem. It was everything else around here that was the problem. Yes, the Bucks, they would say they wish they had Mike Budenholzer back and not whoever they're running out right now in Doc Rivers. If Budenholzer can establish that leadership in the locker room and then on the floor if Devin Booker can stop guys from kind of bickering and I'm kind of looking at Kevin Durant too there were too many times last year where Kevin Durant was chewing out Drew Eubanks and not in a way where it's like hey man this is where you gotta be it seemed like he was annoyed with teammates so I need Kevin Durant to not be annoyed with anyone and I need Devin Booker to step up and it just matters a lot with this team who is filled with a bunch of strangers who haven't played before, then like a Denver Nuggets who had played together for forever or a Boston Celtics who had played together for forever. Do you get what I'm saying? Do you, do you know what I mean by that? 100%. I think that this team will benefit this year from the fact that it's not the first time. I think that just in and of itself will help maybe diminish the need for somebody to just take this thing 
over in that way. There will be more chemistry. There will be more continuity. There will be more of an understanding between especially Book Beal and KD, but also even some of the role players. There's a number of reasons why last year's situation imploded, but I've said over and over, they went out and got James Jones's buzzword last offseason for filling out this roster was mid-prime veterans. That is your Drew Eubanks, your Kata Bates Diop, your Nasir Little, your Jordan Goodwin, all these guys that flamed out who aren't even on this team anymore. They were the ones who were supposed to step up and fill out this whole thing, the guys who needed to be led. There is nobody like that anymore. This roster is full of vets. This roster is deep now. It's Royce O'Neal. It's Mason Plumley. It's Tyus Jones in those spots rather than a bunch of kids who are running around like chickens with their heads off. So I think that there will just be a natural evolution. But I also agree that there probably needs to be more direct communication, less on-court bickering and some other voices to step up. So let's get into some of that. What else does leadership look like beyond just Charles Barkley telling the best guys to do it more? And how do we think it'll play out on this year's team? We'll get there next. First, today's show brought to you by eBay Motors. Passion, drive, and patience. The formula for winning championships is also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance, whether that's a supercharger, a roof rack, exhaust kit, LED headlights. I've told you I bought the flap on the interior of the driver's side to keep the sun from beating me in the eyes all the time, and a, a wheel cover, which just spun off as I was driving literally to a Suns game once upon a time. They have Everything you need. Over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, meaning you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. With eBay's guaranteed fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to make your car the MVP and bring home huge wins. So keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. eBay guaranteed fit only available to U.S. customers. All right, Ben, let's keep the show rolling here. So as we both agree on, this hierarchy, this leadership dynamic, it's been staring the Suns in the face for a while. We have a clip here from right after the season from owner Matt Ishbia basically laying this exact thing out. He talks himself through it a little bit and eventually lands on the head coach and Devin Booker need to be at the top of this. Let's hear it from the owner straight to us. However, what I'll say is this, we have great leaders, great people, the coach is the leader, but then at the same time, you got Devin Booker, the face of the franchise, who's a great leader and holds people accountable. And once again, I see some of this stuff, what he does in the film room, what he does in the practice floor, what he does in the, in the locker room. Like Devin Booker is that guy and he's the face of the franchise and he's gonna be for the next 10 plus years and so hopefully until he retires. And so like Devin Booker is that guy, but you got Kevin Durant, you got Brad Beal, you got players that don't play as much that actually lead. And so I think it's a, it's, a, it's a team effort, but at the same time I look at coach, star players, what do they do to hold people accountable? And at the same time as the owner and the GM and the, 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 everyone, everyone's gotta play their role. And so um, who's the leader on the floor? I mean, it's probably best to ask the coach and the GM and the players that, because I'm not in all those things, but I look at the coach and, the, and Devin Booker as those guys, um, as I look at as Devin Booker's team for, you know, since I, before I got here and, and hopefully uh, for the rest of his career. See, nobody's expecting KD to be this guy. Everybody knows it has to be Book. Is it just that simple? I mean, absolutely it's that simple. You know, he would mentioned something we had said in the previous segment. Coach Budenholzer, Devin Booker. And, you know, when we get into this, who are the Suns leaders? If you are expecting Kevin Durant to lead your basketball team, that is a you problem. That's not a Kevin Durant issue. Kevin Durant doesn't take on the lead, uh, doesn't take on the leadership role. He doesn't want to do it. He just wants to hoop, which by the way, that's the best version of Kevin Durant when he can just worry about getting buckets, playing basketball and hooping. That's the best version of it. The Warriors, Kevin Durant, 2016, 2017 or 2017, 2018 MVPs of the finals and a champion because Steph Curry was the leader of that team. What happened on the Oklahoma City Thunder blew a 3-1 series lead. Probably not a ton of leadership in that locker room. With the Brooklyn Nets, Kyrie Irving, Kevin Durant trying to lead, didn't work out. 
Don't expect Kevin Durant to be a leader. And don't get upset at him because he doesn't want to be a leader. It's not his job. So expecting him to be that guy to lead your team emotionally, that's a you issue, and you should stop asking for that to happen. I think a guy who, outside of Devin Booker and outside of Mike Budenholzer, needs to be a leader this year, I think is Tyus Jones. This is a guy that not only brings stability to the starting lineup and to a team that needs a point guard desperately and fills a lot of the holes the Suns have, X's and O's wise. This is a guy that's been around the block. He's been on very good teams. He's been a leader both on the court and off the court for a Grizzlies team that I mentioned in the previous episode or two episodes ago was better with him on the floor than John Morant on the floor. I expect Tyus Jones to not only be good for this team on the floor playing basketball, but being able to decipher X's and O's and, and leadership off the court and keeping guys' heads up. And I also expect that a little bit from Bradley Beal too. But a guy that I just don't think we have thought that far about it, we just think, ooh, point guard, shiny object, he fits here. That's a guy for me that I believe can really be the Drew Holiday-esque leadership to the team, not defensively, but mentally wise, because yeah. he is a winning basketball player. Yeah, and he's been around in a lot of different situations over a long period of time in the league. He also plays a position where it's part of the job description to be communicative, which is the buzzword that came up a lot. We just played Matt Ishbia's quotes from the immediately after the season press conference that he gave, but I went back and listened to what all the players said. And the number one thing was communication across the spectrum. Devin Booker, this was the quote that stuck out to me that I think really sums it up. He said, experience is the best teacher. The more that you can spend time together, feel hurt together, go through it together, the better off you are in the future. You can't just go out there and think you're going to win off of talent. KD echoed the same thing, communication. And I thought Bradley Beal's quotes about communication and, and learning what each other like and how you can succeed together was honestly the best. And it goes right into what you're saying about Tyus Jones. And I think was a big part of why Frank Vogel didn't work out here. He said that they need to be more vocal to each other and to the coaching staff about what's working. And I think that that's probably where there was a big disconnect last year was that the players just didn't seem to have input bottom up, right? They didn't, if, if they felt good about the flow of a game, they didn't feel like things were rolling over, being incorporated into the game plan, being, being incorporated into how the team was going to go play going forward. I think Bud is somebody that has a track record of, of he's reinvented himself every place he's ever gone. He's worked with very different kinds of superstars from Al Horford to, you know, Giannis, those are not similar players at all, but he's built great offenses and defenses <laughs> around both. I have optimism that that's really going to work. Um, and Tyus Jones has to be a part of that. He's going to be the guy initiating these actions, running plays, pushing pace, slowing the game down, having the game as a yo-yo on his hand. And that guy has to be communicating with the coach, communicating with the best players. I almost just think having that extra little stair step maybe between the big three and the coach of a guy like Tyus Jones could go a long way. I mean, they thought this is what they were going to do last year with Eric Gordon. If you remember for about half the year, EG was a guy we talked about in theory as one of the leaders of this team. That was part of the idea here of bringing him as the sixth man of this son's team. It flamed out. He got pouty halfway through and, and kind of wasn't very effective by the end of the season. I think he's, his age is just catching up to him. But they knew they needed this, and I absolutely think Tyus Jones can be what they hoped Gordon was going to be. You, you know, you mentioned the Frank Vogel thing, and I don't know about you. It doesn't really feel like, to me, Coach Budenholzer has an ego. Like, it looks like, to me, he's a very nice guy, seems like a family, small town guy from Holbrook, Arizona, that no one knows where that is, so they just say he's from Arizona. Like, that's what I feel like. I don't, Frank to be honest with you. You don't I, don't know Holbrook know where, I don't know exactly you've, where it is. If you told you've me never been to Holbrook, Arizona, map, never. I've been to Holbrook, Arizona far too many times in my life, but neither why? here nor there. Why is you got to tell us why? My dad is super famous in the science world. No one knows okay. this. My dad is Mr. Meteorite. So we would go hunt for meteorites out there. 
Uh, in okay. dry lake beds. Do you know what a meteorite is? Yeah. Okay. Well, there you go. My dad is, yeah, his name is Mr. Meteorite. He's on a bunch of science. Yeah, it's a whole thing. It's a whole thing. So I used to go hunt meteorites with my dad okay. when I was younger. Right. You didn't meet Camp blood, out in dry. No, I never met Coach Budenholzer, and we're still trying to figure out how to pronounce his name. But yeah, what I was trying to get to before everyone heard about my past with space rocks is uh, doesn't it always kind of feel like Frank Vogel had a little bit of an ego? Like he was always at odds with especially Kevin Durant. And it always kind of felt like in uh, in after game interviews, he almost seemed just angry with the team, whether they won or lost. And it felt like he maybe didn't feel like he was getting enough credit or getting too much blame. Don't you just feel like that is going to get fixed all on its own by subtracting someone who just didn't work with the players, especially with the guy in Mike Budenholzer, who I promise you they're not firing another head coach this year. So it's kind of like the players are spinning the Russian roulette wheel and understand that regardless of what personality they get, they better get along with it because he's not going anywhere. And outside of Devin Booker, everyone else at the end of this year, if it blows up, could be shipped out of here quicker than they can even fathom it in their brains. Don't you, don't you kind of feel like that's always been an issue with Vogel, at least with the Suns this year? Yeah, I think that's absolutely fair. I mean, he wasn't their first choice. He never was a perfect fit with the roster and the style of play. I think there was always an understanding that you know, they needed to fire Monty. They didn't have a backup candidate immediately. And let's just see how this works. Whereas Bud, that's the best candidate this cycle across the whole NBA, a proven winner, a proven track record, as I said, of adapting. And if I'm Devin Booker, if I'm Kevin Durant, if I'm Bradley Beal or anyone else, I'm thinking, how do I fit into what this guy has already shown himself capable of doing rather than, I'm out here, let's see if the coach follows me type of thing. So yeah, I mean, it might be a little bit, we might be going a little too far with the Vogel disrespect, but I think in general, we are on the same page there. And that this leadership structure, he is going to have a much stronger voice, you would hope, and ideally create a structure for everyone else on the roster where they can have a say more than they did as well. So I think that this, yes, it's going to be Booker, but I think that it's a little bit more kind of, it's it's not too different from what like Katie and Kyrie were advocating for in Brooklyn. When, when Kyrie said we're all the coach and whatever, it's like <laughs> that got laughed at, but I do think a lot of the top teams in the NBA in this era, that's kind of how it works. And that's kind of where I wanted to go next is to reinforce a point you made a minute ago where you mentioned Boston. This is true all across the league, all across recent history. And frankly, it's been the case in Phoenix for a couple of years now as well. So we'll get to that next. First today's show brought to you by Better Help, making therapy more accessible, easier, which is what it should be. Kids are always learning and growing, but as adults, sometimes we lose that curiosity. What's something you'd like to learn? Maybe a new language, gardening, a new hobby. Therapy can help you reconnect with that sense of wonder because your back to school era can come at any age. I have told you a million times that I've benefited from therapy and it's not because some emergency happened in my life and I ran to the nearest office. It's because I said, hey, I think I could benefit learning things like positive coping skills, how to set boundaries, being the best version of myself. It's not just for people who have experienced trauma. It can just be to bring the best out of you. If you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's online, convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire, get matched with a licensed therapist, and switch therapists anytime for no additional charge. Rediscover your curiosity with BetterHelp. Visit betterhelp.com slash locked on NBA today to get 10% off your first month. That's betterhelp, H E L P.com slash locked on NBA for 10% off. All right, Ben, let's close it out here. So let me just throw throw teams at you, and you tell me who the leader is. And we'll see how many of these teams we get to where we know for sure that the best player is the leader. Okay? Okay. I love this exercise, by the way. So, Boston, you already said. I would agree. I think you would probably say Horford or Holiday, right? Somebody in, I, in that. 
I think you have to lean Horford because he's been there Feels longer. Like but absolutely number two, Drew Holiday. I think that's the guy that stirs the drink. He's the star, the straw that stirs the drink there. It's definitely not Jason Tatum. It's definitely not. Yeah, he's There's a quiet no guy, chance. right? He's yeah. a quiet and, dude. And Brown can be a little mercurial, as we've seen, right? So He, he okay. can almost be a little... Just Jalen Brown can almost cause rifts at times when he's sure. in trade rumors or whatever. So yeah, absolutely. Not either of those two guys. The Knicks, I mean, I think Brunson is the soul of the team. Clearly, they play off of his excellence, but it feels like Josh Hart was a, a pretty mm. big motivator with his energy and, and you know, connections with the Villanova guys and everything. Maybe you could go either way. The Bucks, it's Giannis, right? Yeah, yeah. That one's Giannis. pretty obvious. Cleveland, it feels like it's Donovan. That seems to be the case. So, yep, okay. Yep, yep. Let's go to the West. Oklahoma City, that's a young group. I honestly don't know. It feels like Shea Gilgis Alexander, probably the answer there. Probably. Probably. But you got guys like Jalen Williams, Lou Dort as well. I, it, that, yeah, I'd probably go Shea. I mean, once upon a time, it was Chris Paul who kind of galvanized them, and and I, maybe it just kind of became it's Shea really after good that. Point. Denver, I don't think it's Nikola Jokic. I frankly don't think it's Jamal Murray. I feel like you heard Bruce Brown was kind of one of those guys. Aaron Gordon has been that guy. Even Jeff Green, when he was there during the year they won the championship, it's been these acquisitions who have stepped up for that team. I don't. It's not the the best two guys, right, in Denver. Oh, no. Um, I think it was a guy who had a really strong role in that, who just darted for the Magic. I think sure. KCP was a huge guy lost both on the court and in the locker room. That dude was a leader. He only wins everywhere he goes. He's got two championships. So yeah, KCP was a big one. And then Jeff Green. Yes, absolutely. They, I couldn't tell you how much they wouldn't stop talking about Green during broadcasts and how he yeah. was unk to everyone. So it's yeah. definitely not Nicole Jokic and definitely not Jamal Murray. Dallas, I, I don't. I don't even know. The answer on that it's one. Grant Luke Williams yet. thought he was. <laughs> I he think it's. I think chipped that's out. the. I think that's the rare Jason Kidd head coach leads that team. It's not Irving. It unfortunately is not Luca. Despite my affinity for the guy, I, I think it's Jason Kidd. But a, a guy like Luca can't be the the leader off the court for a guy who kind of struggles to stay in shape and barks at officials for every call. I'd probably say it's Jason Kidd. Miami, I think you you Spo and and maybe a little bit of the Riley culture, but you probably would say Butler and Bam there. Butler, so like Butler, it's it's not a lot of the Spo universal. culture though. Yeah, no. right. So I'm not trying to no. make the case that every team it's always the role players who lead. I'm just the making last the two case championships that it's teams not that didn't have that case. exactly, and. So when I look back at it, even recent NBA history, right? I look at guys where LeBron clearly sets the tone and the culture for the team. And I think people feed off of that. Steph, very much the same thing. Not the same approach. They're not the same personality, but similar. Greg Popovich has always said that Tim Duncan allowing him to coach Duncan was the best thing Duncan ever did. But Tim Duncan was not, as far as any of us have ever heard, screaming in people's faces or leading film sessions and taking everybody out to drinks at, at night. That was not his style. So I thought back to, if you remember, I kind of want to circle back to the on-court leadership stuff here because I found a clip, if you remember, on Christmas Day, Devin Booker went viral a little bit because the mics on the stanchions caught him barking at, I believe it was Nasir Little or, or Chemezi Metu for a allowing a turnover and a fast break the other way. Remember, Book darts down the court, was never going to catch and actually have a block on the play or a stop of any kind, but just to show that he was giving effort. And then he wrung out the player who made the mistake. You mentioned a while ago Eubanks and Katie getting mad at him. I like both of them doing that. I understand that there's a limit. There's a line. They may have crossed it. I criticize Katie's body language at times, as I think everybody did who watched this team last year. But I think there's a place for that. 
And if that's how these this star group is going to lead, I think it can be effective. And I think these role players in the rest of this roster, Beal included, frankly, may just need to adjust to that. You know, if that's what the accountability is going to be here, it's better than nothing. And it clearly is motivated from a genuine place of frustration that these other Suns players last year were just not giving consistent effort. So I guess beggars can't be choosers. That's how KD and Book seem to communicate and lead. And that might just be what this situation is. And everyone else has to figure it out accordingly. Yeah, I, I get what you're saying. The terms of sometimes you just got to be a hard bleep and actually get on people. Kevin Durant, though, and you mentioned it, the body language and the annoyance, almost like it was a frustration that someone was screwing up on Kevin Durant's court. Like, it just felt like everything had came down there, and it would really seem like it would affect the rest of the game. I don't mind guys getting on each other, but if they're going to do that, there needs to be some form of communication because you can't have... Good cop, bad cop, that stuff doesn't work. Everyone's got to be on the same page. And problems last year, which again, injuries or coaching issues, no one was on the same page. And I think that, and that's why I'll, I will ease up on Kevin Durant a little bit on the annoyance and the fatigue with guys like Drew Eubanks driving everyone insane because there was just no continuity. Guys like Chemezi Metu were out the, out the door. Or Kata Bates Diop was out the door. Now we're going to bring in someone else. People are injured. Frank Vogel's upset with everyone. I just hope inside the locker room, there's a players only meeting of Tyus Jones, Bradley Beal, Kevin Durant, Devin Booker, and Yusuf Nurkic. They're like, hey guys, this is what we're going to do. We all got to be on the same page, injured or not. Because if we're going to win a championship, we got to have some sort of foundation here or some sort of continuity. So I agree with you in a sense that I don't care if that's what they do. I just hope they talk about it beforehand so they're not getting different lines of communications and so that yeah. guys can be able to follow the lead of other players. It has to be consistent for sure. And it has to be both the on-court and the more mature off to the side. So you're we're on the same page. It can't just be that it's barking at you when you make a mistake because guys are going to feel some kind of way. No one would ever make the case that that's the most effective form of communication. Hey, when you <laughs> slip up in the heat of a moment, I'm going to scream at you. That like That's not getting taught at seminars on leadership by any means. But I think, again, for a team that struggled so much with communication and needs to get out of its shell a little bit, I don't mind it. And if it can be the gateway with maybe a little bit of a better head coach, some actual veterans, some less infuriating players, not like Eubanks, I think that can be another building block from last year to this year that, hey, we're an accountability team. We're in the moment team. We're going to have conversations in the film room at practice and whatever, but be ready to hear about it in those moments. And ideally, maybe there's a lot more of those in October and November and less of them by December, January, February, if the season goes the way that we want it to. Yeah, give me 30 seconds here just to say this. Devin Booker, Kevin Durant, Bradley Beal, Tyus Jones, you know what, especially just the big three. Booker, Beal, KD. Those guys, and KD as well in this, even if he doesn't want to be a leader, need to lead by example. And this is where I'll give KD some credit. Kevin Durant never lacks effort. Kevin Durant never lacks effort on the defensive end, never lacks effort on the offensive end. He's doing everything he can. I need Devin Booker, Bradley Beal, and other veterans on the team to follow that lead. Because if Ryan Dunn comes in and he sees Devin Booker diving for a loose ball or chasing a guy on a chase down block that he, know, he knows he's not going to get, that is just the precedent and the hustle that I want for this team. So even Kevin Durant, Bradley Beal, Devin Booker, those guys got to lead by example. And Bradley Beal and Kevin Durant, I don't really have too much of an issue with them doing that. It feels like they do that most of the time. I just want to see it consistent because that stuff is contagious. And I want a team to get contagion from everyone else just doing the little things. If this team just tries really hard and hustles and plays a brand of sustainable Knicks basketball in terms of hustle and hearts, this team, the floor is really high, and then the ceiling is endless. Yeah, 
And that's the common thread that I think you see when it's LeBron, it's Curry, it's Duncan, whatever examples you want to think of. There was never an absence of leading by example. And there was that for this team last year because even the best players did not always give that top 105% intensity play to the scheme and the style that they wanted to on a night-to-night basis, all those things that led to their undoing. That was also contagious, I think, in the wrong direction at times last year. You want to avoid that, put it in the other direction, and start building from there. All right, that'll wrap us up. Hit follow or subscribe. We'll be back next week. One more Monday, Wednesday, Friday week from Ben and I before we start daily on September 16th. So you'll want to be there for that as we round towards Suns training camp and media days two weeks after that. So you'll want to be right here every day like you hopefully already are. We'll talk to you next week.